what hour your clock strikes. Here, it's always Halloween. And I'm always your haunted host, Luce Tomlin Brenner. Welcome to Small Frights Friday. Each week, I like to share a curated selection of calls from the All Hallows Hotline and letters from the Eek Mailbag. I took the last couple of weeks off to rest as my skeleton commanded I take a break. I had a few lanterns reach out to check in and ask me how I was doing, and I just want you to know how much I appreciate your concern and your kind words, and everyone was really supportive. Um, I'm fine. I'm great. I am doing as great as someone who has lived through a pandemic can be doing. Um, But, you know, it's... uh, It's just, I'm exhausted. How are you guys feeling? Are you oh so very tired? I surmise it's just, you know, processing the intensity of the last year while, you know, relearning how to integrate friend hangs and events. And like, I'm a bit of a social specter, which is a creepier version of a social butterfly. And so because of this, like I love being out, I love being around people, but I easily overdo it in my excitement to like do and see all of the things. So I I do have the hunch that for those of us who are like that, and we've talked about this before, um, those of us who get overwhelmed during Halloween with our ideas and our activities and our to-do lists and that slump that happens after Halloween when it's over and you didn't do everything you wanted to do and you're having FOMO, like I think that's going to really hit harder this year than it ever has before. And if you struggle with that, then I think we all are going to have to work extra hard to remain chill and present in the moment to enjoy Halloween washing back over us. I think the temptation to overdo it is definitely going to be stronger than ever, but we don't want to miss any of the magic of our season just because our bones are too tired because we went too hard after being indoor cats all year. So just think of rest as something that you do not only for yourself, but also for your community in order to spread joy around Halloween land. We must be well-rested in our body and our minds. Never feel bad for taking a break when your skeleton tells you to. It's your Halloween duty. Before we dig all the way into this episode, I want to welcome our newest Patreon Ghoul Gang members. We have had uh, quite an uptick in the last couple of weeks, and it just makes my little orange and black heart pound, pound, pound. Thank you so much, Teresa McCobb, Sephora Emerton, Burgundy Black, KJ, Paul M- Murson, and Angela Perkins. Angela Perkins runs a really amazing, really fun Instagram called Junk Castle at Junk Castle, uh, where she does very cool, uh, l- like wooden stamp designs of VHS tapes and pretzels and just like snacks and movie stuff. Um, I really love her Instagram a lot. Highly recommend it. Uh, Angela, you're so sweet to subscribe. Thank you so much. Thank you to everyone. Um, You know, I wanted to uh, actually also call out Teresa, who is an incredible artist. And I'm going to put her um, website in the show notes. She has gorgeous art, uh, a new piece that she just put up called uh, Dance Macabre, which of course, you know, is very much related to our chapter that we finished on skeletons. We did a whole uh, episode about Dance Macabre and how that influenced our modern day skeleton decor. And it's just a gorgeous piece. And another one called Life from Death, uh, a human version and a skull version, excuse me, (laughs) a human version and a goat version, both are skulls, (laughs) different creatures, different skulls. Um, that also remind me of our skeleton episodes. They're absolutely gorgeous. And a bunch of other prints and cards and really cute stuff that I think you guys would all really like so much. And, you know, it's important to me to not only support independent makers and artists, but definitely support lanterns. And I love the idea of all of us, you know, supporting each other and uh, buying small and keeping uh, the artist life 
possible, helping each other thrive. So um, thank you, Teresa, and I hope that you guys enjoy some of her work. Serious big thanks to every single Ghoul Gang member. We are almost at $250 a month. We're like one patron subscription away from it. And $250 is half of what it costs to make the podcast when we are at our eight episodes a month, which we are getting back to in August for sure, if not sooner. But August is my deadline to get us back on track after uh, my rest. So um, you guys, thank you so much for helping get this podcast made. We seriously could not do it without you. You keep, uh, it's always Halloween independent, ad-free, and sustainable. You're the best. Um, This Saturday, we have a fun Patreon event, actually. Uh, For Pride Month, our Patreon movie night will be a double feature that I have dubbed Bisexual Terror. I am bisexual. This is my culture. I am programming two back-to-back horror movies that I think are the epitome of bisexual life as a lady. Uh, So first up, 2002's May by Lucky McKee. This movie totally warped my world when I saw it. It's also starring Jeremy Sisto from Clueless. It's one of Anna Ferris's earliest movies right after the Scary Movie franchise. And also James Duvall from Greg Araki's New Queer Cinema Teen Apocalypse trilogy. There is so much interesting stuff in this movie, and I can't wait to dig into it with you guys. And then we're following up May with 2009's Jennifer's Body, Megan Fox, Amanda Seyfried, Adam Brody, written by Diablo Cody, directed by Karan Kusama. This movie packs a wallop. It's not only very disturbing, but it's also hysterical. It's one of my all-time favorite movies, and I cannot wait to present both to you. And uh, on these movie nights, I dig into the history of these movies and I talk about the backgrounds and how they were made and also, uh, you know, connections to Halloween themes that we talk about on the podcast. And then I stream it and I join in uh, for an ongoing chat with everyone throughout. And so these are some of my favorite things that I have gotten to do since we started the podcast. We do two movie nights a month. Sometimes I do a double feature, so you get three movies, and that's at our ten dollar Patreon level. If you want to join us, you have uh, like uh, it depends on when you're listening to this. I was going to say twenty four hours, but I don't know when you're listening to this. This episode comes out on Friday. Our movie night is going to be this Saturday. Sign up anytime before we start at four p.m. Pacific Standard Time, and uh, you're in. Okay, speaking of fun Halloween stuff, some incredible Halloween news dropped in Southern California this week, and I'm really eager to share about it. So have you guys heard of Midsummer Scream? Midsummer Scream is our annual Halloween convention in Long Beach, and this was one of my favorite things to do in the before times. I went every year, I'd save up money and get a bunch of different cool Halloween decorations and horror merch. And uh, they had all kinds of mini haunted houses that you could walk through and panels. A couple years ago, I got to go to the Hocus Pocus anniversary, 25th anniversary panel, where um, the writers and directors were there. Thora Birch was there. It was extremely cool. I love Midsummer Scream. But of course, they canceled it last year. And they also canceled it this year because, you know, it's a lot of planning and they weren't sure where things would be. By this summer, even though things are getting a little better, they had to cancel it. However, now that California has gotten the go-ahead to, quote, reopen, they announced that they're going to be hosting a smaller pop-up event in Pasadena the weekend of August 14th and 15th called Awaken the Spirits, which I think is a super fun, creepy, cute like Ouija board vibe and like a great way of being like, we have to awaken ourselves after being dormant for so long. It's great. So I ended up snagging a weekend pass along with my spooky podcast friends, Jen from A Touch from the Past and Shannon from This Will Scare You. So we all got passes. We're going to be there all weekend. And I just am so thrilled for my first planned Halloween event. 
And because I definitely think that calendar Halloween starts in August, I just can't think of a better way to kick off the official 2021 season. And the only thing that's better than that is that I've been speaking with a number of Ghoul Gang members on our Discord about planning a meetup event on Sunday the 15th. So if you're near Southern California or you want to make the trip for the weekend for the very first Lantern meetup, you got to snag your tickets now and then stay tuned for an official meetup plan. If you can't do Sunday, I might do one on Sunday and one on Saturday. But right now, we got five or six people confirmed for Sunday. So let's try to make it Sunday. But again, flexible. Nothing but flexible. Look at them bones. They're so flexible. Um, You guys, it's happening. We are getting up, stretching, walking out of our mausoleums, and we're ready to see the world again. I'm so excited. I'm going to put a link in the show notes to grab your Awaken the Spirits tickets. I think they're going to sell out pretty quickly. So if you haven't gotten them yet, uh, don't sleep on this. All right, now it's time to creep into our calls and our letters. Our first eek mail was sent in by Ruth from England on our Patreon Discord channel. Hi there. I heard about the Teal Pumpkin Project a few years back, and I've been trying to accommodate allergies during trick-or-treating the past few years and also offering sugar-free options. But the kids look at me blankly when I check in with them about this. Also, most of the kids that trick-or-treat in my neighborhood are from Muslim and Hindu households, and I found that a bunch of sweets that that we typically carry have gelatin in them. So those are also not suitable. Now I indicate if things are veggie or vegan at least. Maybe the word will get out that there is a Halloween-obsessed lady in the neighborhood and the parents who don't want their kids to have sugar can at least come to my door and get some wee toys. Ruth, this is so interesting. I had never heard of the Teal Pumpkin Project before, and uh, she sent the link, so I checked out the website. And from the website here, it says, putting a teal pumpkin on your doorstep means you have non-food treats available, such as glow sticks or small toys. This simple act promotes inclusion for trick-or-treaters with food allergies or other conditions. Uh, The advice here, if you want to participate, is to provide non-treats for trick-or-treaters, toys. Um, I've seen a lot of suggestions like spider or skull rings, um, little vampire teeth, whistles, kazoos, stickers, rub-on tattoos, that kind of thing. Um, And they said, place a teal pumpkin in front of your home to indicate to passersby that you have non-food treats available and spread the word. So this is us spreading the word. I will put the link in the show notes for you guys to check out. I think this is a really cool idea. Uh, I think that toys are super fun anyways. And when I throw adult Halloween parties, I'm always handing out little toys. I also like the little rubber witch fingers that you put over your own finger and little like elastic skull bracelets. I always feel like those are a big hit. Oh, and one year at the Dollar Tree, I found rubber bouncy balls that looked like eyeballs with like little veins and everything. Super cool. That was my cat jumping across my desk. And then during a different exchange, Ruth and I were talking about how much we both love the not at all spooky show, Deary Girls. And then she shared with me that Deary has a huge Halloween event every year. And it's my dream to go to Ireland for Samhain eventually. And Deary looks like spectacular. The city made this really cute animated video about the history of their Halloween celebrations. And it They had this like little jaunty background music that put me in such a relaxed state. And I was listening to it. I was like, yes, jaunty Halloween music wash over me. And um, I'm going to put that in the show notes as well so that you can enjoy it too. So thanks for all the hot tips, Ruth. If any lanterns out there participate in the Teal Pumpkin Project, let us know. If you have any fun ideas for little toys to give out to kids, Instead of candy, let us know. How do you feel about giving out toys instead of candy? Must it be candy? Where do we stand on that? I know we're trying to make sure we can bring trick-or-treat back 
hard and strong and fast and swift and um, not lose it to trunk or treat. So I'm curious if we think toys bolster it, if it takes away in some, in some way. I, I think it still seems really fun, but I'm not a kid anymore. So check in with the kids and see, see what they think. And if you've been to Deary Halloween, I want to hear about that too. All right. Now we will take a call from the All Hallows Hotline. Hello, Luce. That intro will never get old. This is your physical therapist, Spooky Pal Meg from Boston. Um, I have three things to say quickly today. I was compelled to call after listening to the most recent episode. I love the Haunted Hangover podcast. Um, love Dave. I am obsessed with his idea. He needs to write somebody a letter, get it going. <laughs> like, let's do it. There's the script. Um, I think it's, I totally get what you're saying in terms of, ooh, I think people, loyal fans will be upset that Max, you know, has passed in his, uh, in his version here, but I kind of love it. I think that he could, you know, he could come in as a sort of ghost sage wisdom for Danny, spooky kind of thing, in and out throughout the movie. Um, sprinkle that in. But other than that, I think it's a winner. <laughs> I think that's uh, so awesome. So that was number one. Number two, any and all meetups in Salem, Massachusetts, I am there so quick. I am in it. I am ready for it. 2021, 2022, give me all of it. I try to go every year. My partner and I just bought a house, and I was really pushing for Salem <laughs> for a significant period of time, but we only strayed away because the commute into Boston would be a little rough. Um, but it is the greatest place on earth. Can't wait. And lastly, um, as we are getting hyped up for your witch content, I was thinking a fun thing to share would just be simply that I was, you know, thinking about uh, the fact that I was a witch for Halloween, a classic, when I was like eight, nine years old. I banged it out quick early in life. Um, I try never to do the same thing more than once. So I thought a fun question for your listeners that they could respond to on Instagram or via email or whatever would be like, if you were a witch for Halloween, what kind of witch were you? There's so, um, which witch? <laughs> There's so many different kinds. You've got your classic like children's storybook which with the black and white striped tights, that is really what I chose to rock at the time. But you've got like the spooky in the woods, green face with warts. You've got Glinda the Good Witch. You've got modern day Sabrina. So many options. So if other Lucille Lanterns were witches, I would love to know which witch you were <laughs> um, or one of your very own. And other than that, love you, Lucille. Love the podcast. Thriving. Have a beautiful, spooky day. <laughs> Meg, my physical therapist. If only you were my physical therapist. I would love that. It's just the commute from LA to Boston. Oof, it's a killer. So you really packed in a wallop with this call. So many amazing points, lots to consider. Um, first of all, I don't think, I love the idea of going to Salem this year. I really feel like the closer we creep to October. It just does not feel realistic for me. But if I can help facilitate a lantern meetup in Salem for 2021, I am here to help with that. But I would love to plan a for real 2022 trip. That sounds delightful. Um, I love that you're also a big fan of the Haunted Hangover. Uh, they are a delight. Uh, definitely good friends, very supportive. I'm happy that we're in Halloween land together, and I love that you're into Dave's idea. In the last episode, uh, I talked about uh, Dave from The Haunted Hangover had a really out there creative idea for the new Hocus Pocus 2, and I've gotten tons of feedback for what people want from the new Hocus Pocus, and man, it's so hard to keep our expectations low, you know? This is not... <laughs> not a judgment on anybody. It's like me too. I'm thinking of every single thing I want out of like one franchise movie. And it's just, just like when you get excited about the events for Halloween, you got to chill at some point and be like, let's just let this happen and not overhype myself. <laughs> 
But I really, really love um, your input here on that. And I am very open to hearing any more ideas from people about what they hope Hocus Pocus 2 will have in store for them. Or if you're like over Hocus Pocus, that's a hot take. And I can't tell you how well that would go over in the Lantern community in general. But if you got something to get off your chest about Hocus Pocus, we are here for you. Meg, I love your idea about witches. Which witches have you guys been? I personally, I have told the story before, but I was one of the witches from Macbeth because I was an uber nerd and I made my two best friends in seventh grade be the weird sisters with me. And instead of saying trick or treat, I insisted that we say double, double toil and trouble. And let me just say, it confused the heck out of every single person who answered the door. A bunch of unread Philistines in my neighborhood of Elyria, Ohio. They did not appreciate it. I also had us carry little glow-in-the-dark snakes. Like, I would say maybe, I don't know, a few inches long. And then we would exchange the little snakes for candy. That also threw people off. If you try to at all go against the grain of the prescribed trick-or-treat plan, it freaks people out. So um, that's my witch experience. I would love to hear what y'all's were. And I think it's really fun to think about how many different types of witches there are. And I think that's so cute, Meg. And I really want to put together a collection of pictures of people in their witch costumes for over the years. And I've had some people send me some really great witch pictures already. Witch pictures, witch, witch pictures. That's very hard to say. So if you have witch pictures, send them to me. Um, And I want to put out a little collection of them when the new chapter is ready. Last but not least, Meg, congratulations on your new house. Buying a house seems very hard, very scary, and I'm super impressed. So congrats on this milestone and thanks so much for uh, calling in and always having something bright and fun and sweet to say. Now it's time to check in with our next caller. Hey, Lisa, it's Elisa, and I feel moved to share this supernatural story with you. So, uh, I don't know, a few years back, I was driving on the highway and talking on my phone, as one does. And um, I kind of noticed vaguely that people in the middle lane were moving to the left and the right lane, and I was in the middle lane, but I wasn't really paying attention. I, I didn't really make any conclusion from it, but... Um, so people kept moving to the left and to the right, and I was still in the middle lane, yakking away. Um, and then I noticed before it was too late that there was a couch in the middle lane. Um, and I hit it like full speed on like 70 miles an hour, and I just lost like complete control of my car. I was just like spinning all over across all of the lanes, and um, I just had no control of the car. And I just thought to myself like, fuck, oops, sorry, <laughs> um, I guess this is how I die, you know, um, and I was just putting on the brakes, and um, when I finally came to a stop, I saw that my car was maybe about an inch from the guardrail, and I was prepared for all these cars to be hitting me, but no cars were coming, and I, I looked, and there was a a figure standing in the middle of the highway with his hands outstretched, stopping all the cars, so um, it was like a guy that kind of looked like Powder from that movie Powder. He was wearing like a long trench coat and had sunglasses on. Every car stopped in every lane for me because of him. And he came over to my window and he said, it's okay for you to start driving now. You're safe. And I just, I I went on with my drive. And anyway, I, I don't know if that was some kind of a magical angel. What do they call it? Protector angel? Guardian angel? Yeah, that's it. Some kind of guardian angel, some kind of a, benevolent ghost um or just like an unusual looking man with like a lot of presence (laughs) and bravery but um yeah anyway i thought your uh listeners might enjoy the story um anyway thanks for the great podcast listen again soon bye oh elisa wow you have chilled me to my core. What 
that sounds like something you should not have survived. Like I, one time I hit a patch of gravel on an on-ramp to a freeway and I spun around twice and I was certain that that was the end of me. And we just didn't go into the highway. We were just still on the exit ramp. So people weren't driving fast enough to anything to happen. I was with my best friend and we were like, are you okay? Are you okay? Are you okay? Yeah. Yeah. And then we just drove in silence for like five minutes and then we busted out laughing for like 20 minutes. We could not stop laughing because we were in this near death experience. And I can't imagine what it would have been like to be alone and in the middle of the highway and then to be confronted with either one of the nicest people of all time or a true ghost. Like, that's amazing. I can't imagine the hubris and the just the bravery. I, hubris is kind of, I feel like has more negative connotations to it, but just just someone being like, I am going to stop traffic with my body. Like, that seems so dangerous also. So how could that have been a real person? But also, there are just really incredible people out there and they don't get the same credit that all the really terrible people do. And by credit, I mean attention, really, is that the, the worst actors get the most attention when we really should, um, you know, give it up to powder for coming through. And, you know, I'm just using that in a, a joshing way. That was a movie I loved as a kid. It's probably highly problematic. I have not revisited it as an adult. But very cool of this guy. Uh, if you're out there and you're a real person and you're not a ghost or a guardian angel, hey, give us a call and let us know because that was a really cool thing that you did. And I think Elisa needs to, to, needs to know. Or maybe you don't want to know. What do you prefer? Do you like to think of it as your guardian angel? Do we believe in guardian angels? Are guardian angels a Halloween thing? At what point is it spooky? At what point is it comforting? I think angels seem scary, seem just as scary as ghosts to me. Anything that lurks in a different realm, it's freaky. Even when they mean good, it's a little freaky. It's just like I don't want to interact with ghosts that are like relatives ghosts. And I love my relatives and I miss my dead relatives, but I'm not trying to interact with their ghosts. It would scare the shit out of me. Come to me in a dream kindly. No foreboding warnings, no like grizzled pointed hand from a corner, a kind visit in a dream, great. Any other time, no thanks. Unless you're going to save me on the highway, I guess that is really good. What am I doing turning away spiritual help? I don't know, you guys. Listen, have I told you how tired I am? Elisa, this is a really, really incredible story. I, I think I'm just rambling because I am shocked that this happened and I'm so happy that you're still alive. So thank you for sharing it. It has been a minute since we've gotten ghost stories and urban legends. So please call in with your local near-death experience and how a ghost saved your life. I want to hear about it. I also want to hear your trick-or-treating memories, your Halloween party triumphs or disasters, your book and movie recommendations, and your local haunted histories. So you can give us a call on the All Hallows hotline at 802-532-DID or write me an eek mail at itsalwayshalloweenpodcast at gmail.com. I also take eek mails from our Instagram. It's at It's Always Halloween Podcast. As I said at the top of the episode, if you love It's Always Halloween, please subscribe at patreon.com slash It's Always Halloween or make that one-time donation using our tip jar. You can also support the podcast by buying It's Always Halloween merch on Redbubble. That link is in our show notes and on our Instagram as well. This episode of It's Always Halloween was performed by me, Luce Tomlin Brenner, and your fellow lanterns, Ruth, Meg, and Elisa. The editing, theme music, and sound design is by Pete Burns. Thanks, Pete. You can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at LTB Comedy and Pete at Mittenberries. If you're on Apple Podcasts, please subscribe and write us a little review so that other like-minded ghouls can find us. We've got a really lovely one this week that I want to share. It's from Asher1234321. That really threw me off, Asher. <laughs> the title is Awesomeness. I am so happy this podcast exists. I love the variety of the show. 
Luce does a fantastic job of providing us with historical context, fantastical folklore, and stories from listeners, all while keeping it fun. Cozy up and listen. Well, that was a delight to read. Thank you so much, Asher. And uh, keep the reviews coming if you're enjoying the podcast. It helps other people find us. There are a lot of Halloween podcasts out there, and we want to stand out and gather more lanterns. Uh, We are also on the NPR One app, so you can subscribe there as well. And make sure to tell Ira Glass you love us. Thanks so much for tuning in to yet another episode of It's Always Halloween. And come back next time, unless your guardian angel intervenes. <laughs>